Hello and welcome to Effect TV Sport. Tonight I am joined by two Irish players that have played many years in the League of Ireland. They're two legends and two characters of the game. It's not only Greg O'Halloran and Phil Harrington, aka Biscuits. We have asked the boys to come tonight because of recent articles that I've wrote have caused a bit of a stir in the Irish community, in the soccer community. So we've asked the lads to come in and pick their brains and experience on how the welfare of players can improve in the Irish League. Welcome lads. Thanks, George. Greg, I know you've read my articles. You've been involved in one of them. Um, how, do you, how do you think it came across and the reaction that you as an ex-player and a coach? I came across good, you know. I think uh, like the reason you're probably bringing us on here is maybe to explain it to people a bit better, like, you know, uh, of what, what your opinion was about. Like, the way I read it, it's you're kind of standing up for players and kind of explain to fans what way, what way things go in pre-season for players uh, when you're out of contract, you know. So, uh, in my opinion, like, it kind of, it, it went out there, but some people uh, disagree with you, which uh, which they're quite entitled to, like, but as you say, you've, you've given your opinion across and explained what it's all about, you know. A lot of players at the minute seem aggrieved Biscuits not being paid over the Christmas period. A lot of players have suffered. What can you say on that? Yeah, I think, I think the time of the year, especially Christmas, I think, you know, it's not on for players not to be paid. If they're professionals at their club, they should be paid. And if Cork City are saying that they're professional players, they should be paid professionally. I can't, I can't understand that they can do without wages for that part of the year. When people are families, there's some players that were families. Okay, it's okay for young lads. Maybe they're living at home with mum and dad. But people that are with families, they should be getting paid. Plus the young lads that are, who they're saying they are professionals, they should be paid too. So I, I don't agree with Cork City saying that, you know, they're professional players and they're not getting paid all through the year. I think it's wrong for the league and it's wrong for the clubs too. As former Cork City players, we will use Cork City, but it goes out to all the players and all the clubs in the league, really, doesn't it, Greg? You know, I know they realise there are smaller clubs, they can't help the players as much as they would like, but a lot of the bigger clubs are the ones that really that I was aiming at that maybe can do a little bit more than they did before. Yeah, it's, it, like... What what, what kind of gets to me is that you're, you could be halfway through a season and like say, you, surely you know a manager is, or a club wants to retain you for the next season. So it's just what, what kind of bugs me about the League of Ireland that's kind of happened the last couple of years is they wait till two or three weeks before you come back pre-season training to offer you a new contract. Like if I, like, no, I don't know if I'm ever going to be a manager, but if I was a mar or manager, surely I'd know who I want to keep for the next season and who I don't want to keep. Surely you should tell the players who you want to keep. Uh, and sit them down, offer them a contract before the season even even finishes, and the f players that you don't want to keep, you tell them at least a month or two before you, the season finishes. Look, it happens in England all the time. Even when when I was an apprentice at Hull, you you get you'll be brought into the office three months before your your contract's finished, and the manager will tell you you're either, you're either going to be kept or you're not going to be kept. So it gives you that time frame uh, when you're being released to go and search another club, maybe the club will let you go train or with another club or it gives your, your uh, name out on the internet or with the PFEI to say this player is available for the next season and gives managers the opportunity to go sign this player. Like, you know, but that's the only disagreement I have in the league where I think they, the, the clubs kind of let the players hold on, hold on hoping, oh am I going to be offered a contract, I'll wait, I'll wait, I'll wait. Then the season's finished and they're, they're still waiting. and. That's what happens and you're out of pocket, obviously you don't know what to do, where am I going to go, do I get a job, am I going to go be signed back for the club, am I going to be professional, am I going to be part-time, do you know, that, that, like, these are the, all the questions that you ask yourself as a player, what, what do I do, like, you know, but the, the clubs should and managers should know if you're going to be offered a contract or not, like, you know. One of my concerns is the young players that are coming into the game now, Biscuits, the 18, 19 year olds, they seem to, I don't know whether fans kind of these days are still a bit, have a little bit of bitterness to, 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 for players that play maybe in 2005, 2006, that have got good money. But what kind of support can the younger players get now? It doesn't, there doesn't seem to be much happening. Yeah, I think the, the, the team in the 2005 is, is far superior to other players there now. There's no, there's no doubt about that. I know there was Do you think the league is stronger in general? Oh no, no, not without a doubt. Not when uh, you won the league and uh, when Pat Dolan started off being professional here. And uh, I, I don't think the team now is nowhere near as good as the team then. But I think the, players, the players then were far superior. And I think more experience too. I think what's happening now is that there's, there's too many young players in the league. And I say they're giving them just small little money and the, the league is going to suffer for it. 
Yeah, but what's happened? No I think about that. the league from 2003, maybe to 2008, 2009, was mm. was magnificent league. Like you look at the players, you look at the the squads that the uh, teams had, they, they were unreal, and yeah. it was just the right, the, even the rivalry. Now, now you look at the the league. No, no disrespect to it. Like you know, young fellas have to come in. They have to learn their trade. Mm. Maybe that's the best things that have to happen. The young fellas do come in, but like obviously they're they're not they're, they're they are being paid peanuts real like you know but they want, I suppose they want to play in the league but the thing is like when supporters come and saying players were on massive money in 2005 of course they were but sure the, the league was was excellent it was it nearly a full time league we had Cork City us we'd Shelburne we'd Bohemians St Pat's you had Derry City these were all massive clubs massive massive teams and like all the te all the teams at the time were, were nearly up the top and were competing against each other it was it was a fantastic league, a very hard league to play in I then, not yeah. compared to now, I don't no, think. Who's to blame, Biscuits? Who do you think? Well, I think the, F the FEI are to blame too, you know, with the world's going on, because the, like, look at the crowds, there's no one actually going to the games. Coxeter is still getting the best crowds in the league. There's no one going to the Dublin games, where they're getting, what, 1,500 people to 2,000 people in derby games. The, the, the interest isn't there. And uh, I suppose financially, it's not there either, but at the end of the day, I think it's going more of a part-time league now than it's a professional league. And, uh, and you're not you're not going to get good quality. You're not going to get good quality of player because you're not going to pay the money, and the league is going to suffer for that. Can I just say, anybody watching tonight can come to us on Twitter at Feck TV, or you can get us on the Facebook at Face at Feck TV. Also, Greg, I've had a lot of um, negative tweets, mainly from club support or, that are run by fans. A lot of them said, "Stop the obsession with the greedy League of Ireland players, George." If I back up for any of the players not getting paid over the Christmas period, well, you can't. How can you? How can you be greedy? Uh, I listen in my own p position. Like I, I, I left with Cork City. Uh, there was a contract offered to me. It wasn't good enough in my in my eyes from for my financial like, uh, stuff. Well, why should I take it? That's not me being greedy. I didn't ask for a lot of money. I just mm. said, look, pay me what what, what I'm worth. If, if people don't realise, we were Cork City, we train Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, we play a match on a Friday and we're in either Saturday and the Sunday. It's, it averaged out nearly 20 hours a week. And, and not even more, it could be more if you're travelling to away matches. That's 20 hours a week away from my family. So, like, like it, it's, it's a job on top of another. Like, I work as well on top of that, like, you know, but it's, it's not real. Like, it's just, it's it, they, like, to be fair to Cork, to Tommy at the time, he, he gave me a, a contract and it was, uh, it was on the table for me and I, I didn't accept it. And, that's the way it was. It wasn't. I don't think the financially it, w it was any beneficial to me. Like you know, it was. It wasn't uh, what I what I think I was worth. So I just left it. But I think some of the lads were getting offered contracts and maybe they had to take it because they didn't think they had anything else. And that's what's happening. You know. Because I've had another tweet as well. I've had. I'm saying players had it too good in years gone by. They got paid too much. No, not at all. You won the league, didn't you? That proved yeah. the point. But I, 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 don't, I don't agree with this. It's okay for supporters to be greedy, but at the end of the day, they're the first to abuse you if you're not performing. And what's going to happen is the, the quality players in there, so they're going to be giving out to, to these players, or, or they're going to give it out to Tommy, and they're not going to be nowhere winning the league. So at the end of the day, you've got to pay to, to get a good player, well, and you've got to pay in professional, professional wages. Well, that's a question. Like the, the supporters go on to the players and say, oh, you were on too much money, you should take a big pay drop. What about if, they, if it was put the other side, oh... Uh, the supporters paid the extra tenner to come in and watch, and you get we get better quality players. I guarantee you, sports wouldn't pay the extra tenner. They can barely pay fifteen euros as it is mm. to get in. Like you had that at Galway, didn't you? We did at Galway. Nick Leeson was the the chief executive at the time, and I think even for a friendly, he he upped the gate to twenty euros for the for the main stand. They just built the main stand. I'm sure, there was only about five in the stand. No one would pay the money. But the thing is, he tried. He said, like, if you want us to compete in the league, we have to give bigger wages to get better players in. And we'll we'll have to up the gate money, but sure the fans didn't pay it. So well, it's not that they didn't pay it; maybe they couldn't afford to pay it. So it's the exact same with the players. Why should we take? Why should they take a, a wage that they can't afford to take? So uh, what do we do? Should we we quit? And I wanted to ask you this, Greg. I have from you being an assistant manager and being on the other side as a player and as a coach. I had a tweet from one of the Shamrock Rover supporters said, "44 weeks contracts are the way of life in League of Ireland." Clubs don't have income over winter months to support paying wages. What do you think of that? Well, look, that's, I think that's, that's kind of a bit nonsense. To be honest, look, every club has a, a commercial manager in this league. I think the FEI uh, give, give money to some part of a, a position in a club to every league of our club. I think it's 20,000 a year. I could be right, I could be wrong. 
But that's the commercial manager's job to do it in the off season. They, they have 30 weeks of the year when we're playing football to go and trying to sort out the other 22 weeks of the year. I had this argument with a with a fellow down in Cove when I was when I was playing for Cove. What do you do? He said, "I'm the commercial manager." I says, "Where's all the commercial? Do you not get money for the off season?" And he was like, "No." I said, "Do you organise any friendlies for pre-season uh, English clubs to come over?" No. I said, what, 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 "What job are you doing? What are you getting paid for?" That's that's what the club, that's what the the chief or the commercial manager should be doing, getting all the sponsorship to prepare you for the off season. But I think obviously you're not going to get 52 week contract anymore in the League of Ireland. But what I do think they should do is that for the for pre season training, say for eight weeks until this season starts, they should get expenses maybe to go training because obviously the club here at Cork City don't have their own training ground, so they they're going. It's just not all Cork City, though, Greg. You know, it's in Dublin. Well, Corsi, even it's with, all over. Even when I was yeah, even when I was even when I was with Shells, George, when when I went back on loan, we were training in two and three different venues, and sure, you still have to drive there for nothing. Why why would you, why would a player go train for nothing? I know the guy players do it, but sure, obviously they get well, ex they get paid expenses and they get good jobs, but. Can't just turn ask a fella to come train in in this venue one night and then go to another place the next night and not get paid. It's, it's ridiculous. I've asked the question about the PFAI and the FAI recently, biscuits. Mm. As a, a footballer that played in England and in Ireland, um, do you see a, a big difference in the unions? Oh yeah, without a shadow. You, you know yourself, George. You know, total difference. If you if you go to the PFA in England and ask for anything, they'll, they'll, you know they're going to try and help you. Over here, you don't know. You don't know who to look to. Like at the end of the day. The PFA is, is in a different league to the PFAI over here. Why do you think it's like that here? I think it's generally, I, d I don't know, to be honest, it's, it's hard one to call on that, but I just think the professionalism in England is far superior everywhere, isn't it? You know, in the, in the clubs, in the, in the training grounds, in everything that they're based on. It's really football world there. Over here, they, they tried it over here when, when you won the league and the teams got professional. Let's be fair now, it was a lot better than what it is now. There's no doubt about that. I, I thought the league had improved immensely then, and there was good quality players there. But now I think it, it, it's going downhill further and further. I think. I think what's happening now is that there'll be so many young lads in the teams now, and there'll be lack of experienced players there, which will be a downer for the young lads because you know when you go to a club, you need to to have an experience of players around the younger lads to help them. And then what's going to happen? They're just going to give them poor, poor wages and just players maybe coming back from England and just signing for next to nothing. But the quality of the league is going to suffer for it. I spoke to Joe Gamble recently and he said to me that he feels that all the players are leaving the younger players down now in Ireland because they're just really just not bothering anymore and just taking what's been given to the younger lads and he feels the older lads have a responsibility to look after them. Well, you know yourself when you're young, George, you're naive and everything. You know, when you go to clubs, and I, th I think what, what's happening now is that some the young lads are coming back to Ireland and, you know, they're looking at a situation of where am I going to go, what am I going to do? They're not going to part in England. They're coming here, so they're just signing for maybe, you know, p uh, less money, poor money, really, and then they've nowhere else to stand on. And uh, at the end of the day, how, lo how long that carries on, you don't know. They might, they might sign for here, and then they'll get disjointed with that then and says I'm not earning enough here so they'll be looking elsewhere again. Greg I'm not putting the total blame on the clubs from my point of view I think maybe you know when they play an Irish 11 against Man United and Celtic and into Milan in the summer just why can't one gate receipt go to the League of Ireland players for the players out of contract at the end of the season that might need a hand over Christmas just little things like that if people had a bit of common sense like you said about the pre-season friendlies earlier on, do you think that could be a way they could go down, or does the, do the FBI need the money that much that they can't well, help out the lads? Yeah, well, look, I think, as I say, it's it's not. I don't think it's entirely the club's fault. Like even even going back to Corsi when we won the league with City last year, or in two thousand and eleven, and we went to the League Cup final. Even in the League Cup final, the FBI took nearly all the money off Cork City. Like it was, I didn't know, know this until I asked one of the board of mansion what's the story like for bonus and all that, and he he actually sat me down and explained what was happening. Like Corsi at the time had to go in and, and had to put on food and meals for all these people for whoever they were in the FEI and all guests of. And I said, what what what's that? What do you do have to do for? And they said that's the the rule of the League Cup final. And I was like saying that that's a load of nonsense. Like you know what, why are you giving all these people? Uh, Food and all, it's a league of fun. Shouldn't all the players and clubs be more rewarded than anything? And even the prize money, should there was hardly no prize money by the time you play in the semi final. I, I forget who we played. Should, we got, should the clubs were losing money from it? And even if you win the league this year, you still lose money. 
it's 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 ridiculous. There's no I don't think there's an incentive for a club to actually go and win something because the prize money is not even there. It's because I think the FAI take half. Even in the FAI Cup final, they take some of the gate money, which is ridiculous. It should be just 50-50. You know, it's it's just crazy. It's not, and as I say, it's not the, it's the club's fault. They try their best. I think every, like in every club in League of Ireland, there's always two or three people behind the scenes who who are unbelievable club members, and they they work their ass off to get finance in, but. Like these people aren't rewarded either, you know. What about coaching, Biscuits? I know you're big into the coaching. Do you think the coaching is good enough for the kids there that want to be footballers or even at, prof at the standard that the League of Ireland play at? Well, I, 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 it, I suppose it's decent enough coaching here. You know, the, the other side of it is, is the training grounds aren't great here. You know, it's still not great. You look at Cox said you know, coming to the League of uh, for this pre season training, I'd say that he was in. Well, other clubs are there, they was in Mayfield or they was in Douglas Hall training pitches, which isn't ideal. At the end of the day, they, they really haven't got their own base to train, you know, so that, that's not helpful for the coach and it's not helpful for the team. It even I, comes across, even our own FAI, I, even our senior team, yeah. they have to use Malahide United. Yeah. You, you go into the, in, the English it's FA. It's not ideal. You look, at the English FA's, you look at the English FA's facilities they opened up, is it St George's Place or wherever yeah. it's got? You look at it, it's world class. You know, no, I say, 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 like say there is good coaches around the place, but I'd, and then you're going back again to finance. You know, like you you couldn't just be a, a full time coach here. There's no there's no capacity for full time no, coaches. Do you find here. it's a click? So though, biscuits is it hard for new newer younger coaches to try to get in because there seems to be the same faces. Well, I'll put you, I'll, I'll put you this way, George. I, I went on a coaching course with Packy Bonner. This is going back five or six years ago, and we were told there'd be jobs for us in in, in the League of Ireland. You know, you do your badges here in Dublin and there'll be goalkeeping coaches seminar there, and there'll be jobs for you around Munster and all this. This is going back five or six years ago. I'm still waiting for that job. Greg, I've got a question in from John Darrier. He said, the recent uh, FIFA Pro Tournament for unemployed footballers, is it a good way for an Irish player to find a club? I don't think so. Listen, every manager in this league knows who the players are, who are out of contract. There's a big list on the on the, the PFAI website, who, who wants to be out of country, who wants to be noticed. What did they spend, 10,000 euros to go over for a, a, a two or three days? Is it a waste of money they could have just give the players that need it? In my opinion it is, like why, what's the point, like you know, why don't they have different teams playing against different League of Ireland clubs or something like that, or have trial matches against each other, like why do you have to go over to Norway or Sweden? It just baffles me, like there's plenty of Munster Senior League clubs around the place, Leinster Senior League clubs who would give people a game. Surely it's better to look at, your, at the home, homegrown players here than, like, how, how are League of Ireland managers going to watch players over in Norway? True. Um, Alan Keane from Sligo Rovers, he won the league last year with Sligo. Alan said he's concerned about the education that is provided for footballers in this country and what's going to happen to them when they finish. They seem a lot of footballers just end up struggling. As soon as they finish here, they've got nothing to fall back on yeah, biscuits. Have you seen it happen to a lot no, of footballers? Without it, you know? Like uh, you, you look at you look at people that played in this league, George. How many have jobs from the league? A handful. Yeah. You yeah. know, and I suppose some of them aren't full time. They're just part time. Just, just, just maybe doing the Tuesday or the Thursday. But it's, there's no full time capacities here for them. Not for like you, you could go and do your coaching badges. You could go to the top of your coaching. But I don't think there'd be a good job here for you in the coaching side of it. That, that would pay you decent money. It's not again. A, it's not a full time league. Like no. you, you're lucky. It's like it's part time, and it's never like we're we're only cutting ourselves if we think we're going to have a full time league again. It's it's like even even down to managers having pro. You have to have a pro license to be a manager in the league of Ireland. How can you have a pro license in a part time team? You're, you're training part timers. Do you know what I mean? Like like you have to allow people to, like to work. Even like even myself, I coach a Munster League club in the second division. What, what do I, next they'll be bringing in pro lists to do a month's year. Rugby league seems to be growing though, Greg. Why can't soccer? Because the rugby, it's so commercially, it's excellent. That it, as I say, going back to a commercial manager, if you go to Munster and you look at the commercial setup there, it's, it's unbelievable. They have vans going around the place with Munster rugby written all over. I've, there's only one club I've ever seen with Shelburne written on the, on the vans, or League Vern Club, but one, and it was Shelburne. Only one of all the clubs I've been with. They all had this kit vans, they had all this stuff. None of the advertising on it, only one, and it was uh, Shelburne. It's, it's unreal, it's just, I think the commercial setup in the League of Ireland is desperate. That's where the FAI should get into clubs and, and train these people to say how to go and approach uh, sponsors to get money in. Like, how, how many businesses are in Cork? Can you not go and, and even if you've got 50 euros off each business, 
say like that's how that's how to run a club. You get get this person out to get the money in. That's you do. With your experience, Greg, you've played for a lot of clubs. If uh, people are watching, you've played for uh, Hull City, Cork City, Longford Town, Shelburne, Derry City, Galway United, and Cove Ramblers. Which one do you think was the best run? I, if I had to be brutally honest, I think the best run had to be the Forest because look, they took it over. All right, we to take a wage drop, but you were getting paid every week, and it's gone down the road now. Where obviously. The fans own the club, and I think that's where the League of Ireland should be running. I think, unless you have a a fellow who's a multi multi millionaire who's going to bankroll the club, but then you can't you can't trust a fellow like that. Like you you saw that with St. Pat's with Man Keller coming in, put a load of money in, and within one or two years they're gone bankrupt. Like players players owed money doing all this stuff. But with Corsa, I think the fans, even with Shamrock Rovers, like the fans owning the club, it's an ideal situation. It's an ideal way to go. I think really. You know. I have a tweet from uh, somebody from your old club from Waterford, uh, Clive Power. He said, as a, Waterford United fan, as a Waterford United fan, there is no way we can afford paying 52 weeks. We are on our knees only for the biggest clubs. Yeah, that's, uh, now you're going back to Waterford, do you know, who, who, who are up and down all the time, really, and one minute they're up, the minute they're down. It's just part, part of League of Ireland again. That, that's how it's financially run. Well, that's the point I was trying to get across, Greg. I wasn't necessarily saying that all clubs should pay them 52 weeks. Or I just think the FEI could help. The PFAI should do better for the players and just help them out. And so, you know, they've got a structure that people can get help. I just feel there's nothing like that at the minute. I'm not saying the club should be forking out all the time. But I think, you know, people need to come together as a union or just set up a brand new league and just go, right, it's going to start like this with a wage cap or whatever. Do you think that would work in the league? It's just come back with... Then again, George, it's just... It's just what can I say? It's just not a, the league is not attractive enough. Like the first thing you do is if you put a, a match on television, people say oh, I wouldn't watch that. It's just there's no attractiveness for the league for someone to come and promote the game. There's no like all right, you have your your MNS on a Monday night, but it's for it's for an hour. It's it's on at the wrong time on a Monday. Do you know? Uh, it's just like there's you, nothing wrong with eight o'clock on a Monday, Greg. Well, eight o'clock on Monday is grand <laughs> on this side, but. Uh, Obviously, if we were to keep going doing this, we won't be able to watch the MNS. <laughs> but the thing is, uh, no, it's just there's no, there's no one kind of promotes the league. It's, it's not a, like even myself, I'm after giving up football in the last year. I've gone to two Cork City matches. Not that I can't go. It's just, it's just there's no, no one attracts me to go out and watch it. Even though I'd like, I'd love to go next year now and, and and do it. But it's just I haven't had anyone to bring me up and say come come to the match. Like you know, no, no one's really pressured me into doing it. Like you know. Okay, as we're going to move on quickly, I just want the last couple of questions on the League of Ireland. Who do you think will be up there next year, Biscuits? Oh, I think Sean McGrove will be fast up here, I think. I think looking at what they, uh, they've signed and uh, they've a new manager, which apparently they're all raving about him, saying he's a good coach, he's a good manager, he's a, and he signed a few players. And I think they'll be even hungrier, they say, because they've got a good manager. Uh, a new manager, I mean, so I think they'll be up at the top of the pile. As for the others, I th they're all on a par, Slightly to be honest strong, with you. Though, you think? I don't know, yes, they've lost a few players though. I don't know if they've, the, if they've replaced them with better players, I'm not so sure. But I, I think Shamrock Rovers will be definitely the, the, the team to beat. And uh, I, think, I think they have a better structure than anyone else, everyone else anyway, George. And I think at the moment Shamrock Rovers I think they're, they'll be be, they're a bit more professional than the other teams in, in the way they go about things. And uh, I, I, I think they'll be the team to beat. How about yourself, Greg? Yeah. Well, she, you can't really tell, George. The only one, as I said, the only one who signed players is Shamrock Rovers. Uh, Dundalk have signed a couple. Sure, we don't even, I don't even know who's who's signed for who, because no one has signed anyone. We're going to move on quickly. Who do you think then? Who's your? Um, I, I'd like to see. I, well, Shamrock Rovers are going to be there, obviously, but I'd like to see Cork City making a push. I think player for player in any squad. I think they, uh, if the lads sign like the likes of Dan Murray and all them, they'll be up there. I know you do a bit of scouting, Greg. Any young player? Or well, actually, I lost out in Sean McGuire. I had him uh, looked at maybe a year and a half ago with Waterford, with Charlton. He, I had him over in Charlton, but obviously West Ham are after coming in and uh, looking at him. But uh, yeah, there's a couple of young fellas out there. There's a couple of young lads in Cork City doing well at the moment, you know. And as you say, you don't know who'll be watching matches. Like, you know. Thanks, lads. So we're going to move on and just talk about sport in general over the weekend. One of the biggest news in Ireland, um, we'll definitely aim this one at you, Biscuits, is about Shea Given has, has come back out of retirement. What do you think of that? Yeah, it's a strange one. I, I don't know what he's... Maybe, maybe he's trying to get another club for himself, I'm not so sure. But uh, one minute he decided, well, it was six months ago, he decided to hang up his boots in international level. I think it's a strange one. He's not, he's not in the Aston Villa team. 
maybe he's looking for a move for his last move and to get back into the Irish team. I'm not so sure, but to be honest with you, I think his days are gone by in the international level. To be honest, I think the the sparkle has gone, and uh, you know, I I just think age has cropped up with him. He's a fantastic goalkeeper in his day, but I think time has gone by. Johnny Walters had a bad Saturday. Greg, two own goals. Oh, jeez, miss penalty. Miss penalty. <laughs> two good, two good goals, though, aren't they? So was with uh, ah, these things. I mean, he's like you look at Johnny Walters. You know him yourself. He's a fantastic player. Like you know, he's a, he's a grafter on the pitch. But uh, I suppose he'll get over once once he can start scoring a few goals for us in the for the World Cup qualifiers. Will be all right. How would you think he got over that? I think there. How would you get over it? Me. <laughs> I don't think I'd be able to even head head that good, George. To be honest, you. Uh, nah, I just think you know those lads in the Premiership. They should they have they they've such focus now. I think it's just straight after the game, it's gone, finished. I think that's the way they are. They're, they're well trained like that, you know. Another thing at the weekend, biscuits was company sending off mm. against Arsenal when uh, Man City had a good two 0 win. Mm. Do, you, do you feel as an old school footballer that Tatlin has gone out of the game? Yeah, well, you can't. Yeah. Without a doubt, George, it's big, there's a big change now to what it was years ago. Uh, you know, the two-footed tackle, if you go in, if you lunge in, you're liable to get a red card. And he proved that point on uh, the other day, you know. So it's a bit harsh, but that's the way the game has gone. The game has changed in so many ways and, you know, in, in everything, really. So you just got to buy with that now. You just can't lunge in. If you, if you lunge in, you're liable to get a red card. The big game of the weekend was Man United and Liverpool, Greg. Man United coming out on top. There's a lad here, De uh, Dave Murphy, who was uh, saying how Red cheats and Alex Ferguson is this and that. But Liverpool seem to really be in decline, really, don't they? But they are. But like, even I, I was talking to a fellow today, like, what do they pay for storage? Twelve million, and you have them on the bench. It's, it's yeah. ridiculous. Like, you know, if you're going to pay twelve million for a strike, you start them. Yeah. I don't care how unfit he is or how fit he is. You, you better start them. But the thing is, like, uh, even with the Liverpool Man United games, going back to the tackling. Uh, before Liverpool Man United matches, they would be hard tackles going in and be thing. But now not, it's it's not so good anymore. The I think the rivalry is still yeah, there. I, but to be to be honest, I don't think Liverpool have improved since Rodgers has been there. I've been watching a few games. They'd be, they're still the same Liverpool to me. To whether what when Daglish was there, they wasted some. They money win one, they lose one, they, they draw one. They, they're just not consistent. I, I don't think the consistency has been there since no. even Rodgers has been in charge. Great stuff. Uh, any interest in the rugby, Greg? It's been a big Heineken Cup weekend again. Yeah, like uh, as I say, I grew up in Crosshaven where they're they're very uh, well into their rugby down there. Um, a few lads from Crosshaven used to play with Munster, and my brother plays with uh, Crosshaven, and he'd be telling me all about it, like you know. So, like they, those lads can tackle if we can get a, them into the soccer match, you'll be alright. Uh, Connick, they're out of it. I know there's a Crosshaven lad um, plays for Connick, Frankie Murphy. Um, so Con Connick, they're gone out of the Heineken Cup, but they had a good season, haven't they, so far? Yeah, they've done alright. I think uh, the, the manager's leaving. I think they've, they're, they're bringing in a new manager, so they'll be looking to all keep, keep their place with this new manager coming in. So uh, I think they've done alright, to be honest with you. Because I know you're a betting man. Munster need to beat uh, Racing Metro probably by at least 20 points and get four tries. Think they can do it? Banker. <laughs> Would you give it they're to him? They're going to miss Nogara. Ah, yeah, Ronan's great lad. Ah, he's a legend of Cork, of Cork, you know, of rugby. Uh, he's a nice fella too, and uh, they'll miss him without a doubt. They'll miss Ronan, but uh, hopefully they can do it. Great stuff. And Leicester are one of the English teams. They're still really doing really well over in England. Any, any? Did you ever watch any of those games, Greg? With the really. English teams, Northampton? Not really, George. Since the since the new child came, I don't uh, get to see all this stuff. Maybe. Peppa Pig rugby or something like that. <laughs> Not as much, George, to be honest. Yeah, that wouldn't be my uh, wouldn't be my subject. Leinster are doing well, though, aren't they? Leinster, they're, they're strong. They seem to be back in it. They got their bonus point at the weekend, so... Yeah, yeah that's good to know, George. <laughs> I don't really know, to be honest. <laughs> biscuits, maybe Biscuits can tell you. Uh, yeah, yeah, they're doing well. They're, 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 they're strong outfit. Why do you think rugby is so big, Greg? In Ireland or yeah. just in general? In rugby, in Ireland. Well, I, I think uh, the reason, obviously, with Munster it had been so successful the last decade. Um, I think this European league really took off. Uh, no, I don't think it's maybe as it's as strong as it was again a couple of years ago. Maybe the, as we were talking about the soccer, but it's after going down a small bit. But um, it's just I think why it's probably so successful in Ireland is because they kept the home the home talent here, like like so like Ronagara. 
they all stayed playing with their provinces. Like you know, they didn't go abroad to say like France and all this stuff. I think that's the way the in my opinion, that's why it's so strong. They kind of kept all these players playing playing at home. OK, we've got a couple of more tweets coming in, lads. Um, Martin Devine said, the important thing is not paying or playing pay, paying players over 52 weeks a year, but paying them what they said they would. Do you think that's the point? You've had that great with clubs, in it, where you've been promised contracts and haven't paid? or Yeah, well, to be honest, I've had it nearly all the clubs, really, George. Even when I left Cork City, like, to make a fact, Cork City were always the ones who paid on time when, and every week really but when I, it started when I went to Shelburne in 2006 there was a stage we didn't get paid for nine weeks in a row but we still went and won the league it was just we, we just said to ourselves let's go and let's go and win this league and try and get some clubs for ourselves and but it followed me everywhere I went to went to Galway I went to Cove uh, and you know look it, that's the way it's not it's it wasn't run properly then but it is now like you know well, if, if you sign a contract the contract should be paid for isn't it it's as simple well, as that. Well, the, the we have a tweet here from a Sean McRover's fan. He said, yeah. uh, Dave Kane, he said, uh, well, he is Kane and me, any of Kane. Um, this is absolute awful stuff from Affectively. O'Callaghan advocating more help for players and a wage cap at the same time. Clueless. It's not the point I was trying to get across. I was saying players need to be paid better. Instead of 50 euro a week, surely they can pay them 150 euro a week or have a cap of 350 for the best players or 500 quid. Yeah, no, well, I wasn't saying as in the point that uh, Dave see, hasn't yeah, understood. But see, a lot of supporters don't, as I go back to what I said, they don't realise how much time you put into it uh, during the week before you actually play a match on a Friday. Do you know, like... There's, like it's amazing, Greg, I, the grief I only ever get are from Shamrock Rovers fans and Cork City fans, and they're the ones run by the club, because really a wage cap and trying to help the players is a totally different point, really, because I'm saying, you know, the players do need a bit more money than, for instance, sending them on the dole and giving them 50 euro a week. I'm saying give the players 300 quid if you can afford it, such as clubs like Shamrock Rovers can well afford that because they played Europa League last year. What Europa League team do you know that's never, that can't pay their players 52 weeks? Has that ever happened? Yeah, it's a joke. It's a true point. Uh, at the end of the day, the, the supporters, you know, they're going to have their say. But at the end of the day, if, if you want a good team out there, you have to pay the players. But this is a, uh, for instance, this is totally the point I'm trying to get. I think it's fans that are bitter towards footballers getting money. I think they look at Premiership players getting 40, 50,000 a week. But they think League of Ireland players are getting that when kids are coming in, getting 30 euro a week and can barely live all over Christmas. Well, they don't see that side because they're they yeah, think their club's in well. Like, we, I put a point there, like, you know, you give a player, say, all right, we just say 200 euros a week, and next to the English club wants to sign him. The club automatically puts 200 grand on his, on his head. Like, where's this valuation come? Then, like, you look at our own Graham Cummins with Cork City, the club got 100,000 for him. There's not a hope in hell that the club ever gave him near 100,000 for his wages. Not to say that, that that's what it should be like, but that's what I'm saying. If a club comes in from England and wants to sign a player in League of Ireland, automatically 100 grand, or oh, it's 200 grand. Do you think Shamrock Rovers are ripping off players in Cork City if they're doing this? Well, I don't really know anything much they about Shamrock Rovers. They can't afford to do it though, Greg, can they, if you think about well, it? I suppose they have the best, they have the best crowd there, they have probably the best stadium. How uh, can Gillingham and, say, Barnet do it in the Football League with six or 700 people at their games? And then you're looking at Shamrock Rovers in Cork City, Derry City, Sligo Rovers, who are really averaging maybe 2,000 plus. Well, the reason they're doing this, George, is because I suppose, in a way, what they're... The, the, Commercially the, better, aren't they? It's the, commercially, the, the, yeah. The, 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 it's it's commercially better, you know. You, you, when you go to these, run, run when you go to these ground jerseys, like Greg said before, you see the cars that are all tarnished with all the adverts and all that on the, on the cars, and you, you actually, when you walk in there, it's a proper football club, isn't it? Like if you did go, do we you just know? say Gillingham, you go in there, they'll have a centre of excellence, they'll have a schoolboy section, they'll have a youth team, they'll have a 19 team, they'll have their first team. Do you know, it's 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 going from six years up. Six years old, all the way up to the to the senior team. It's a club. It's like in England, obviously, it's different. Saturdays, football day, um, like they have like youth development officers. They have it all. It's 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 like a, a, a drug to them over there. That's what it is. And over here, it's it's not like that. Like you know, it's just like even with Cork City going back, to, they can't even have a youth team before other clubs start cribbing that. Oh, they're they're too strong. We can't compete in the league. Like that, that's how you you're competing in the league of Ireland. How do the players stand up to themselves for fans such as Dave there now, who well, look, was obviously clueless himself? The, the way I look at it is, look, if a player if a player is offered a contract and he signs it, that's that's his own fault. Like he's after accepting, it, he's happy with what he gets, you know. But the thing is, like, if, if you say wage cap, Greg, and you say maybe you have like five or six lads, you're offering them nine hundred quid. Why can't you just split up? 
put it down to 700 quid wage cap and then pay the players who aren't getting paid as much that extra bit that the other lads are getting, you know? That's, that's the point I was trying to get across. But yeah. they don't want to listen, do they? Fans don't want to listen, they're just... Well, see, the thing is, like... <laughs> obviously, without the fans, obviously, there's no club, yeah. but the thing is, I'd love to bring a fan to one of our weeks, say, training, and to a match, and do a... How many hours do you do a week, then? If well, you can say, explain. Just say, for instance, I mean, I'll go back to two years ago. You, we train Monday night, say, half five. I get back in nine o'clock in, into my house. Same thing Tuesday. Thursday, you might train for an hour and ten minutes, but then you have to do DVD work after. Still, still half five, eight o'clock. Then on Friday, you could be you in the ground at six o'clock. Yeah. You, you have a match, there. you might get home till 11 o'clock at night. Uh, after you do all interviews and everything, which you have to do, obviously. Then you and then you're in on a Saturday or Sunday morning. So it's, it's oh, just, it's yeah. a nearly a 20 hour a week. It's, it's people don't uh, it's uh, underestimate the travelling in the League of Ireland as well, only because yeah. I think people go, oh, GA players, they play for free. But they don't travel around the country as much as the League of Ireland no, players. No, no, there's a lot of travelling involved, without a shadow of doubt. Uh, like uh, every second Friday, you're, you, you're heading towards Dublin, really, aren't you? Are you but going? it's actually the, the Dublin teams are an advantage there because they don't have as much travelling expenses. Are you looking at mm. Cork City and Derry City? Even Sligo, the expenses they have to pay pay for buses, meals, it's just frightening. You know, it's, it's it is a lot of money. But uh, the thing at is, at the end of the day, I think it's a worry for any player when 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 you're a professional footballer, which you're associated to be, and then you come you come to the part of November or you know, start October, November, and you know you're not going to get paid for four months. It's a worrying time all the time. You're always thinking when you come into that time, oh, here we go again, no money. You're looking, you know, you've got a family there and. There's no money coming. It's hard times. To be honest, it's just not on for professional players not to be paid them four months of the year. I you're don't think it's you're right. lucky actually that you, you can get the social welfare here, like when you're not playing. But even, even when you're playing, maybe you can get a, a bit of it. Like, you know, that's what's kind of keeping the players going here at the moment. Like, they kind of put the two together and you get something. Like, you know, but the thing is, like, it's hard, like it's hard for any young fella, even even not playing football now, it's hard for any young fella even coming out of school and trying to find something now, it's, it's hard, but, and don't get me wrong, it's hard on the clubs as well, right, you know? We have somebody that I just tweeted in before we go, um, they said, uh, for Greg at Fec TV, uh, last time I checked, uh, 20 hours a week was part-time. It was part-time, yeah, 20 hours a week away, well, on top of a job, would you do that, or on top of college, for... The amount of money that, that that's on offer and that some clubs are giving players for 20 hours and even, you don't even get the minimum wage because I'm not going to go and tell you how much players are getting in this league of earn because they're not getting the minimum wage if you do calculate 20 hours over the week. That's only 20 hours in a whole match. Imagine going up to Derry. That's De Graham a Cork City fan, so well, Graham, that's surprising well, as a Cork City or Shamrock Rovers fan anyway, well, isn't it? Like Graham would want to go out to Cork City when they're playing Derry City away and, and go on the bus because that's, that's 20 hours in itself. And it takes you about two days to recover after. So Graham would want to stop saying all that stuff, to be honest with you, and see what, what, what it really is like to be a, a part-time footballer. Do you know? I'd say you ask any Cork City player now, any player in the League of Ireland, if you ask them generally how they feel about it, I'd say they're not happy about it. There's no, if you ask any player that's playing now for Cork City Football Club and they're, they're, they're coming to the, them four months without wages, they're not totally happy about that. And you just got to look through all the squads, like If they George. had another opportunity to go back to England, they'd leg it back over to England. Do you go look through any League of Ireland squad now? I guarantee they've only five and six signed. The only ones who signed all the players are Shamrock Rovers. To be fair to Trevor Crowley, he got in there early, signed his players, probably came to an agreement that they probably, I don't know what they do, gets probably expenses for their pre-season, gets paid maybe before the season even starts. But the thing is, like, None of the clubs have, they don't even know what players, and what will happen is go back to the way League of Vern is always every year, two or three before the season starts, they'll go sign players, they'll go and sign players, they'll go and sign players. Like, it's, it's ridiculous. It's, it's, it really is, and it goes, it puts that uncertainty into players to say, oh, am I going to be signed, am I not? Tell the bloody player two or three, two or three weeks before the season, you're going to be offered a contract, I'll give you a deadline when I'm going to offer it to you, and that's it. Or you're not going to be offered a contract. Just tell the player. Don't put him out of his misery. That's what that's what I think it is. Like you know, because players are hanging around for clubs to come and sign them. They're not signing them, and then they get disheartened. And the player can't do anything then. Great stuff, Greg. I'd like to thank my guests, uh, Greg and Phil tonight, for their insight in the League of Ireland. We hope everyone found it interesting. Keep following us at, at Fec TV on Twitter and on the Facebook. And thank you again for watching tonight and hopefully next week we can add some more of your questions and answer your questions over the coming week on FEC TV. Good night.